Hello friends, welcome to the Viva Boss of Anatomy. Today we will see the uh, back of a leg. In the back of the leg, first we will discuss the muscle of the back of the leg, which are uh, divided into two groups, the superficial group and the deep group. The muscle of the superficial group are the gastrocnemius, plantaris and the soleus. Right? The first we discuss the gastrocnemius. The gastrocnemius muscle, you can see this one, gastrocnemius muscle, the most superficial, it is having a two head the medial head and the lateral head. The medial head will arise from the posterior superior aspect of a medial condyle of a femur just behind adductor tuberculum and also the adjoining area of a popliteal surface of a femur, the medial head. The lateral head, the lateral head will arise from the lateral surface of a soft, uh, lateral surface of the uh, femoral lateral femoral condyle just above the lateral epicondyle right now these two head will unite to form the flaccid part this will again unite with the tendon of a soleus muscle that lies deep to it and form the common tendon which is known as a tendocalcaneus right and through the tendocalcaneus this will get inserted into the rough middle one third of a posterior surface of a calcaneum bone so this is the gastrocnemius muscle. It is supplied by the tibial nerve, right? Tibial nerve. Now the main action of a gastrocnemius is a, it is a powerful plantar flexure. Powerful plantar flexure. It also causes the flexion of a knee joint, right? So this is gastrocnemius. Now the shape of the gastrocnemius is like a belly, the stomach. That's why it is, its name is given the gastrocnemius. Nameless. Now the second muscle is the soleus muscle that lies deep to it. But before that we see one the small muscle that lies deep to the lateral head of a gastrocnemius. That muscle is a plantaris. Okay. Right. So this is plantaris muscle C. The plantaris muscle. Okay. The plantaris muscle is having very small flashy part or a belly part and having the long tendon. This long tendon passes between the gastrocnemius and the soleus muscle C deeply and going from the lateral to medial side. See this is the tendon of the plantaris again. Okay, going from the lateral to medial side and get inserted just medial to the uh, tendocalcaneus muscle that is on the middle one third of the posterior surface of calcaneus, the plantaris muscle. It is a weak plantar flexure of a foot, right? Also supplied by the tibia. Now, the third muscle is a soleus muscle. Soleus is called a soleus because its shape is like a sole or a flat face. Now to see the soleus, we will cut the origin part, this two head of a gastrocnemius, right? So I am cutting the two head of a gastrocnemius. This is the lateral head. Okay, now the medial head. Here also again you can see the tendon of a plantaris clearly. This one is a plantaris muscle. Right? Now below this deep muscle in the superficial compartment, the soleus muscle. The soleus muscle is called a soleus because its shape is a sole or a flat face, right? Now it arises from the both the tibia as well as fibula. From the tibia it will arise from the soleal line, right? From the soleal line. From the fibula it is arises from the posterior surface of the head and the upper one-fourth of a posterior surface of shaft of the fibula 
between the posterior border and the median rest, right? And also it will arise from the arch tendon between the tibia and the fibula. The soleus is united below, its tendon is united below with the tendon of a gastrocnemius, right? And again it will form the tendocalcaneus muscle that we have discussed is origin uh, insertion. The soleus muscle is also supplied by the tibial nerve. Its action is a it is a powerful, it is also a powerful planter flexure of a foot. Now the difference between the soleus and the gastrocnemius is that the soleus is a slowly acting but more powerful than the gastrocnemius. So you can say it acts as a bottom gear during the strolling. Okay? And the gastrocnemius will the gastrocnemius will act as a top gear during the running and the walking and the jumping. Now we see the muscle of the deep compartment of the leg. But before we see one, one more retinaculum, that is a flexor retinaculum. The flexor retinaculum, retinaculum lies on the lower part of the uh, medial surface of a leg, right? This is the flexor retinaculum. The attachment of the flexor retinaculum, retinaculum anteriorly it is attached to the posterior border and the tip of a medial malleolus, and the posteriorly it is attached to the medial border of a calcaneum tuberosity. Now the structure passing deep to the retinaculum from the medial to lateral side are the tendon of tibialis posterior muscle, the tendon of flexor digital longus muscle, the posterior tibial artery, the tibial nerve and the flexor hallucis longus muscle. So you can rem uh, remember this structure from medial to lateral by one mnemonic that is the Doctors are not here. The for tibial is posterior, D for digital, flexor digital longus, R for artery, posterior tibial artery, N for now, that is a tibial now, and H here, the hallucis, that is a flexor hallucis longus. Now we see the deep structure of a back of the leg. For that, I have to cut the soleus muscle along with the each the tendon of the plantaris. Okay. So the, from the middle part, I have cut the soleus muscle. Okay. Here you can see the deep structure of the back of the leg. First deep muscle of the back of the leg that lies in the upper part, that is a popliteus muscle. The popliteal muscle is arising from the anterior root part of a popliteal fossa which is lies on a lateral condyle of a femur. The fibers will occupy the popliteal groove, passes the back of the knee and it will get inserted into the triangular area above the soleal line, right? And also to the fascia covering the soleus, uh, the popliteus muscle. The popliteus muscle main action is an unlocking of a knee joint and it's supplied by a tibial nerve. Now the remaining deep muscle of the back of the leg, we can trace that muscle from the ankle joint that passes below the flexor retinaculum, right? So medial most is a tibialis posterior, then flexor digitorum longus and flexor hallucis longus. Now I will trace the first the tibialis posterior in the upper part. See the tibialis posterior cross the uh, tendon of a flexor digitorum longus from lateral to medial side, right? This is a tendon of flexor digitorum longus. And in the upper part, you can see this muscle. This is the tibialis posterior and it is crossing from the lateral to medial side. So in the lower part, it lies medial to the tendon of flexor digitorum longus. Tibialis posterior takes the origin from the back of the both the bone, tibia as well as Fibula. In the tibia, it will take origin from the upper two-third of a lateral part of a posterior surface of a shaft of a tibia below the soleal line. Whereas in the fibula, it will take origin from the upper two-third of a posterior surface of a shaft of the fibula between the area of the medial crest and intermediate uh, introsius border. Right? Now this two part of a origin they will combine to form the common belly then it this tendon passing behind the groove of a 
medial malleolus. See, behind the medial malleolus there is a groove. So the tendon of tibial is posterior passing behind that groove and it will get inserted principally to the tuberosity of a navicular bone. Right? And then it will passes its slips which will get inserted to the all the tarsal and the metatarsal bones except the talus bone, the first and the fifth metatarsal bone. So this is the origin insertion of tibialis posterior. Now the main action tibialis posterior is an inverter of a foot. It will cause the inverter of a foot and it also uh, uh, maintain the medial longitudinal arch of the foot. Now the second muscle that in the lower part lies lateral to the tibialis posterior flexor digitorum longus and in the upper part it lies medial to the tibialis posterior. Now this part the flexor digitorum longus will arise from the upper two third of a medial part of the posterior surface of a shaft of a tibia below the soleal line. Flexor digitorum longus. Now the tendon is divided into the five slips into the sole of a foot and it will get inserted on the plantar surface of a distal phalanx and into its base flexor digitorum longus right the last muscle is a flexor flexor hallucis longus this one the flexor hallucis longus muscle will take origin from the lower three fourth of a posterior surface of the shaft of the fibula between the medial crest and the posterior border. Right? Now its tendon passes below the flexor retinaculum and it gets inserted into the base of a distal phalanx of a great toe over its plantar surface. Now the, all the muscles of the back of the leg are supplied by the tibial nerve. This is the posterior tibial artery which begins at the lower border of popliteus muscle from the popliteal artery and it ends by dividing into medial and lateral plantar artery beneath the flexor retinaculum. Now throughout its course it is accompanied by vena committants. These are the vena committants, medial, medium size veins. Okay. Now the branches of posterior tibial artery are the circumflex fibular artery. Then Peroneal artery is the main branch. Here is the peroneal artery. Then other branches are the nutrient artery, muscular branches, then comminuting branch, then medial malleolar branch, then calcaneum branch, and terminal branches are the medial plantar and lateral plantar artery. Now the one of the important branch of a posterior tibial artery is a nutrient artery to, to the tibia. Now this nutrient artery to the tibia is the largest nutrient artery in the body arising from the posterior tibial artery. Now the last structure of the back of the leg that is the tibial nerve. Right? The tibial nerve is a terminal branch of the sciatic nerve and its, uh, uh, its root value is the ventral division of anterior primary rami of L4, 5, S1, 2, 3. Okay? Now it also if you like the video, back of the leg like below it, the tendinous and arch share with your friends along with and the posterior tibial artery to get the regular update the on the anatomy video along with the posterior tibial Please artery right? subscribe to the our channel and and below the flexor retinaculum the bell icon. is divided into its terminal branch that is a medial and the lateral plantar no right apart from this terminal branch it will give a muscular branch to the all the muscle of the back of the leg the articular branch to the ankle joint and the cutaneous branch which pierce the uh, flexor retinaculum and supply the back of the heel, back and the lower surface to supply the back and the lower surface of a heel. So this is all about the back of the leg. Thank you.